Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we are going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper and your Bible. And let's get started. What is the character of God? What is the character of God? The pages of the Bible reveal a detailed portrait of the character of God. Perhaps the most outstanding feature of God's character is that he's a loving father to all his uh, to all believers. Ephesians 1 2. Grace be to you and peace from our from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 1. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Colossians 1 12. Giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 1 Thessalonians 1 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. So you see, God is a loving Father to all believers. And likewise, just the same God is uh, by nature is holy, good, is good. Let's look at Mark 10, 18. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest me thou good? There is none good but one that is God. 1 Timothy 4.4 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be given with thanksgiving. So the goodness of God is unmatched and because of it we can trust in Him. The Bible tells us we can trust in Him. Nahum 1.7 The Lord is good, a strong hold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Exodus 33 verse 19 And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Psalms 25 verse 8 Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he will teach sinners in the way. Psalms 34, 8 All oh, test and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Matthew 19, verse 17 And he said unto him, Why callest me thou good? There is none good but one that is God. But if you will enter into my into this life, keep the commandments. Second Peter 1, 3 According to his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto this life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Likewise we see that uh, in the goodness of God, God has always had our best interests at hand. He told us that we know all things work together for the good of those who love God. And those who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. Everything works for good, all right? And also Genesis 50, verse, 50 uh, verse 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. You see, to bring pass in, in this day to save much people alive. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Lamentations 3.25 The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Everything, everything, brethren, everything that God does is an expression of his goodness and it's designed to benefit his people. God's Holiness is likewise unequaled. You cannot be good than God. <laughs> there, there are some people who say, Oh, but God is, is not really is not really good. No, God is good. 
is good and is holy. His holiness is an equal. Think about this. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 2 verse 2, There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Leviticus 11.44 For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. There are so many verses that I can read to you about God being holy, but let me just uh, maybe read two more. First Peter 1.15-16 to 16, The Bible says, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in no all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And one more, Revelation 4, 8, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and the, they were full of eyes within, and the, the rest, and they rest not, not, not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. I, have you seen how much God is holy? And you cannot equal His holiness with anything else or anyone else because His holiness is unequaled. Is unequaled. Seeing the point now? And uh, you have to understand there is not even one stain of evil or impurity in God. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1 5, God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. And Psalms 12 verse 6, it says the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Psalms 19 verse 8, the statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing their heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Hmm. It's really, really wonderful character of God. Another defining characteristic of God is uh, His righteousness. It means that He exists in a state of moral perfection. Right? God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance He had, he had left uh, the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did not do it to demonstrate anything else but his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. This one you can read it in Romans 3 25 to 26 and also 2 Chronicles uh, 12 verse 6. It tells us where whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves and they said the Lord is righteous. Psalms 33 verse 5 He loveth righteousness and judgment The earth is full of the godly goodness of the Lord And uh, Isaiah 45 verse 21 It says Tell ye and bring them near Tell Let them take counsel together Who has declared this from a nation time? Who has told it from that time? Have I not the Lord? And there is no one else beside me And uh, a just God and Savior there is none beside me. That's another very important character of God. Now let's 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 check some few more. God is also just. Do you know that God is just? He's perfectly upright and fair in how he treats his creation. Mm. Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. And therefore I I and therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious to you and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy upon you for the Lord is a God of judgment blessed are all that wait for him Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 he is the rock his work is perfect for his ways are judgment a God of truth and without iniquity just and right is he Zephaniah 3 5 the Lord is the is in the midst thereof he will not do iniquity every morning. Does he bring his judgment to light? He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. Act 17, verse 31. Because he has appointed an, an, a day in which he will 
judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead i can go on and on and on and on talking about how god is just but now let me talk about his loving and compassionate gracious kind and merciful characters of god hmm all these are descriptions of the central character of god think about nehemiah 9 verse 31 nevertheless for thy great mercies sake thou didst not utterly consume them nor forsake them for thou art a gracious and merciful god god is so kind hearted and caring he is that scripture says god is love god is love first john 4:8 god is love and first john 4:16 It says and we have known and believe the love that God has shown to us God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him And likewise the psalmist David describes God as a compassionate and gracious and an abounding in love and faithful father Psalms 86 verse 15 But thou O Lord you are God full of compassion and gracious long suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth so much great love is on that God shows us that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not do what will not perish John 3:16 and also look at the uh, first John 4:9 we can read to 10 it says in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into this world that we might live through him here in his love Know that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And because of this great love, friends, because of this great love, Christ died for us even while we were still sinners. While we were still sinners, we knew nothing Romans 5:8, but God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Titus 3:4-5 But after the kindness and the love of all of our savior towards man appeared not by works of righteousness which you have done but according to his mercy he saved us according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost God's mercy and compassion never fail they are renewed continuously towards us day in day out go and read lamentation 3:22-23 and uh, as I wind up I want to tell you that um, Part of God's character is faithfulness. God is faithful to those who have called, those who are called to fellowship in His Son Jesus Christ. Let me read just one verse on this. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1:9, "God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord." And another thing, in our struggles and failures, God is faithful to forgive us when we confess our sin and return to Him. Because the Bible says in 1 John 1:9 if we confess our sin he is faithful and just and he will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness in our times when we stumble and fall it is immensely encouraging to know that God will never abandon us even when we are utterly unfaithful God remains faithful and uh, he remains true because that is exactly who God is It is his character to be faithful. Second Timothy 2:13 it tells us if we believe not and yet he abided faithful he cannot deny himself. He's faithful. Sometimes we really go down and we feel as if we cannot do anything but God is faithful. Think about Revelation 19 verse 11 and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. and in righteousness it that judge and make war god is truthful likewise and his word is true we know also that the son of god has come and uh, he's given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true by being in his son jesus christ he is the true god and eternal life first john 5:20 it gives a picture a real picture of this he says and we know that the 
son of god is come and he has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son jesus christ this is the true god and eternal life oh friends i have a lot of verses that can read for you god and his word they both form a trustworthy foundation of life in him is no falsehood and lies or deception what god says is absolutely reliable his word is consistent with his character and his revelation of him because of god's character we can count on him to fulfill his promises because we see god's patience and long suffering and are the attributes of god's character he is slow to anger dealing patiently with rebellious sinners god was patient in delaying the flood in noah's time while the ark was under construction giving sinners plenty of time for repentance likewise the prolonging of christ's return is not an indication of slowness or hesitation on god's god's part but of his long suffering as he does not want anyone to die without the opportunity to repent be saved and enter into his family second peter 3:9-10 at the heart of God's character is his desire to be a father to all who draw near to him the more the delay the more the grace the more deeply we dig into the scriptures the more we will uncover new and beautiful faces to the character of God and the longer we spend time with him in his word and his word the better we know and we understand his nature we will discover that God never changes that is all knowing all powerful always present and everywhere he's perfect and there's none like him he's three in one we can spend a lifetime seeking after him and still only scratch the surface of comprehending the depths of our heavenly father's character and that's the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you learned something you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and please don't forget to favorite and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new podcast if you like to support this ministry please uh, you can use the details in the description below otherwise i hope to see you soon in the next one